Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Stuart Gale from Meteoric Resources. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you, Tracy. Thanks for having us back. And you've traveled around the world, Estonia, London, Toronto, but we want to talk about Meteoric Resources in Brazil. What is happening today? Well, I'm going there next, and then that'll help to sort of round out the round the world sort of trip that you speak of. But look, we, we're continuing down the pathway towards getting the project built, Tracy, at the end of the day. Um, since we spoke last, we've delivered our PFS. We delivered the PFS um, and we're very, very pleased with the results from the PFS. The PFS just really gives us more confidence around uh, the mining and the, the exploration, our understanding of the resource, uh, the recoverability uh, of the rare earths from that resource. Um, so we're really very confident around everything that we've done to get that into the PFS. And of course, that's just the next stage as we head into the DFS. So, so our focus right now has been on moving from PFS into DFS. Uh, and also we're building a, a pilot plant in Posos de Caldas as we speak. So what's nice about that is that the pilot plant uh, will give us the opportunity to test out the work that was done in the PFS, will give us the opportunity to continue to work on those metallurgical recoveries and fine tune our process a little bit. It'll give an opportunity for investors um, and funders to come and have a look at it and, and it'll give us more mixed rare earth carbonate. Mixed rare earth carbonate can then be sent out to our off takers as well. So there's a couple of the key things I think since we spoke in May um, that, that we've been working on but, but really it's very much around the delivery of the Caldera project. And speaking of delivery, you, you're always hitting your news releases, milestones as promised since you since you started leading New York Resources. And I noticed your market valuation now is what? Your market cap is close to a quarter of a billion US presently? Yeah, there are thereabouts. Okay, and in addition to the pilot plant, um, ANSO, what are you doing with ANSO? ANSO, we're the Australian Nuclear Science Technology Organization. Um, they have been really important for us in terms of our understanding of the metallurgy of the ionic clays. Um, so we've done um, a, a number of pilot tests with ANSTO uh, over the last 18 months or so, uh, and that culminated in another continuous piloting test uh, a few weeks back. We put a release out on that. And again, that just validated all of the work that we've done uh, around our ability to recover, but also to manage the spent clays, dewater and remove the ammonium sulphate. So we're really pleased with the amount of work that uh, has been put in through ANSTO. Uh, so, so the work obviously, but also the results that we've been able to achieve from that. So earlier today, I was talking to Konstantin Garanopoulos. We were talking about how the ionic clays revolutionized rare earths. Can you tell us if he's correct? Well, Tracy, I think the first thing about the ionic clays in our Caldera project is the grade. You know, the, we've got some fantastic grades there. And uh, in the PFS that we just spoke to, we released our main reserve. And the main reserve came out at just over 100 million tonnes uh, at over 4,000 ppm. So that is enough to keep us going at over 4,000 ppm for at least you know, 10 years in our mining operations. And when you equate that to other ionic clays, you know, that's, that's two to three to potentially four times higher. And that, that, that's, a, that's a really important factor and that's something that really is unique to the caldera. So, so that's point one. Point two is the capital intensity of our project. And because we're mining in ionic clays with a relatively simple process, our capital intensity is you know, quite a bit lower than other projects as well. So grade uh, and uh, a low capital intensity uh, a, a couple of really important points, and then the ongoing operating costs. So ongoing operating costs being at the low end of the ongoing operating uh, cost space, left-hand side of the cost curve, are all things that are really important, certainly from a financial perspective, and something that just helps the whole of the project stack up. So as we look at this from an ionic clay perspective in Brazil, um, we've got, you know, call it the holy trinity in some respects, it's grade, recoveries. We've tested both of those to a significant degree. 
Uh, we've got low costs and low capital intensity. That's four, so I'm not quite sure what that is, but it's, it's better than a trinity. Well, and Constantine and I were also discussing industrial strategies of different countries. Yeah. And he used Brazil as an outstanding example of really being at the forefront of what should be done yeah. in the market right now. And you're in Brazil. Yep. So can you tell us about the advantages of being being in Brazil? Yeah, look, the, the Brazilian government and the Brazilian um, financial space has been very, very, very supportive of strategic minerals, as they're called in Brazil. So strategic or critical minerals. So there's a lot of support in that space to bring new projects into existence and to take those new projects and not just dig them up and ship it out, but to also look at how they can develop a downstream industry, how they can bring technology and development into the country. And Brazil is a really industrialised place. It's got very cheap power. It's got a lot of water. It's got a, it's got a, a skilled workforce. It's the perfect place, really, in many respects, to think about how you can take mining production and bring it further downstream. And that's one of the things that we're working really hard with the Brazilian government on. There's certain incentives that, uh, that are provided as you take things downstream uh, and, and we're part of that process. And of course, you know, a bit over 12 months ago now, we were, were included in the Brazilian investment platform as well, which is another initiative that the Brazilian government and industry uh, and finance have taken on in Brazil to help to, to re-industrialise the nation, which of course is part of Lula's political agenda as well. You said in a news release about a month ago, Meteoric continues to receive strong and unwavering support from all levels of Brazilian government. And you then added at the end that you remain confident of project timelines. So uh, as share, for shareholders out there, what is the project timeline for the next quarter or two? Yep. So, so we've touched on the pilot plant, that's really important for us. We're working through the environmental approval process and the licensing process. So the way it works in Brazil is we get a preliminary license. We're expecting that preliminary license within the next couple of months. Once you get the preliminary license, you move to an installation license. The installation license we're expecting, you know, towards sort of uh, May, June time next year, uh, which will be from the time that we lodged our environmental impact statement in May 2024, it'll be a two year turnaround time. Um, to get the installation license, which is our license to construct. So, you know, when I look at that, and, and again, coming back to the Brazilian side of things, that's a two-year turnaround time to get into construction. That's pretty good going. You know, there's not many countries in the world that can compete with that sort of time frame around getting all of your approvals uh, ready and, and up and running and then into production. So, you know, another uh, important initiative for Brazil. There's a few environmental things that we're working through at the moment. There's a couple of little challenges that we're working through uh, in order to get those environmental approvals. Um, we've, got, <clears throat> we've got a process in place. It's well understood, uh, and we're not expecting that it's going to have any impacts on our timelines. Pretty good working indeed. We've got ionic clays in Brazil, and you're methodically achieving timelines ever since we first met you. For everybody out there seeking more information on meteoric resources, please go to the following website. Stuart, thank you.